What's up some fans around the world and welcome back to another video. So in today's video we are going to talk a little bit about the steering and the steering like challenges or issues that come with moving the steering rack forward and you might wonder why I don't do any actual work on the car like start to cut in the car that is something that I really want to do to get the gearbox in and uh, see how the engine fits and everything but I have strained my back doing some gardening so the moral of the story is don't do gardening just kidding I don't do any serious work because my back is a little bit sore right now hopefully I'm back 100% very soon but today I'm gonna try to explain a little bit about the steering because we have moved the steering rack from the position right here and we have flipped the spindle so we got the attachment point on this side right here and today we are I'm going to try to explain why the spindle and the attachment point can't look like this and this is due to the Ackerman so here I have a little drawing excuse my drawing skills but I think you will get the point when I start to show this so Ackerman is a method used for getting the correct like steering angles and stuff like that so if you don't see here we have the rear wheels together with the rear axle and in the middle there will be the differential and if you draw a V shape out of the the middle of the rear axle you should get these lines through the pivoting point of the steering knuckle and through the attachment point of the steering rack so this is symbolized by the the original steering point where we have the steering rack like behind the center of the the front wheels so when you steer and have it like this here you can see we have the perfect Ackerman this is lining through the the turning and the pivoting point through the steering knuckle and out so when we turn left and we turn left a lot you can see that the inside wheel pivots more than the outside because the turning radius for the inner is a lot sharper than the outer so this will be a smooth transition into like a curve and this is not exact by any means but it shows shows the effect of the Ackerman quite well so if we should have gone with the setup that I shows before by just twisting the spindle so we move the steering rack to the front then shit starts to happen because if we turn left right now the outside wheel will be the, the wheel that turns most and the inside wheel will have the longer radius so when you start turning with this right here it will start to like scrape and uh, slip so you will have the effect of running with like a differential or something like that a welded differential and that is something that you really don't want so if we then choose to go for the Ackerman we need a slightly extended steering rack which I got right here so we attach to the point where it is best suited for the Ackerman so we follow the lines and if we now turn left again you can see that we are back to where we was before the inner wheel is the ones that turn the most so now it has the shorter radius and the outside have the longer radius but building a car is like just a ton of compromises so if you look at this right here 
you see that the Ackerman is actually a little bit past the brake disc and also into the tire you could say of course my drawing is not that exact but you get the point so then the Ackerman will be inside of the wheel and it will be really hard to achieve but what we can do and what I will do is move this point in a little bit so we get so close to the to the Ackerman line as possible and as close to the brake disc as possible without interfering with the brake disc. So I thought this is a really nice way to show it by picture so you get a really nice understanding for it. So we can take it again a little bit faster but the OEM turning radius you can see that the inside wheel turns the most. If we just move it forward, which was my initial plan, you can see that it's all screwed up. And even though it screws up, that doesn't necessarily mean that you will notice it a lot in real life when driving. But if we apply this to a real life situation like we got right here, then this right here should go through the pivoting point which is inside of this so you know it's very very wrong right like it is right now we want this to sit like right here and go straight through to the back that would be the ideal but we need to Re redo this and get it to sit as close to the brake disc as possible without interfering and then we need to extend this so we get this out quite a bit and then I think it will be really nice it will be like I said before it will be a compromise it will not be perfect but I don't think you will achieve like perfection in a build like this and not even the, the guys that build like custom cars with like a piping chassis or something like that where they can choose everything and do everything custom even then they don't achieve like perfection but you can get it a lot better but I know for a fact that this will work and I have seen others do it so I don't think it will be like a super great challenge it's just to do it. That's it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a short one but I think it's very insightful to talk about this stuff as well. Even though I enjoy more like doing actual stuff but this is really important to get the build correct and if one of you chose to do like a copy or do your own rear wheel drive build this would be information that will be really helpful so I hope you like it comment down below if you have any questions subscribe to the channel it means a lot to me and I will see you in the next one bye